Eivor, you made it unscathed. They came from all the... I never thought it possible, Eivor, that you would rally Saxons and Norse under your black-feathered banner. They see the tyranny of this elf king. He would crush them all under heel and plug their hearts with his god. So what is the plan, Eivor? When is their feast day? A few nights from now, but their revelry has already begun. We should attack now. That is unwise. Soldiers pace the paths of the village. Then the night of the feast, under cover of darkness. That is when we will strike. Uba will not have died in vain. We await your instructions, Eivor. I will greet my allies first. Good. Come find us again. Gidrich. After Rochester, I was not... I've chosen my side. It would sooner better hog than a... Guthrum will trample Alfred's ambitions like weeds in the dirt. But... <laughs> Perhaps I shall one day sit upon the throne of all England. <laughs> you so... Look, you Saxon bedwetters. Here is a real warrior. Vili, leave these poor boys alone. Their ears are too delicate for the... F boys is right. This streak of cat piss is barely off his mother's tit. And the Essex boy has hands like a milkmaid. Ha! Such fiendish ribaldry between you two. You laugh in the face of fear. Tweak old man death's beard. I will do my mother and my lord proud today, Eivor. The lord knows I have not been the best of sons. Good to see your spirits high. Fight well, my friends. You soft-cheeked Anglo boys. Have you brought your mothers? Tefter, it is good to see you. I gave you my word. Besides, Alfred's faith is... You have changed much from that guard-whipped boy. I was always him, but my faith was like a veil. And now another educator. I am all a quiver. There you are, Raven. Lufina, pure. Well as ever. Beth. I hunted down more in Winchester on Alfred's behalf. Now we come... How quickly a coin can flip when tossed from hand to hand. Aye, pure. Alfred thought to use me, but he will find differently at me. We all Eivor a lot, my lord. Have you brought your mothers with you this last of them? Eivor! It's good to see you. Erke and Stowe. At London is quiet enough, and Stowe here felt the sharp stab of conscience. Could not let you down, Eivor. That's not what an honorable man does. And you, Broder, I did not think you would... I have seen to my brother. Sent him to Valhalla with grave goods. I am done with sorrow, Eivor. Now, nah. is worth ten of your men. This last of I do not hope doubt. the death will be clear. I have seen them. Finir, stand tall. A light heart lifts all the. Ah, Eivor! Who would not? And how do you feel about bringing sorrow to the Saxons? On... It darkens my mood. I have learned some of the Christ Lord's teachings. Let their delights be ours then. We are... And I will be beside you for them all. My axe ready. I do not doubt. I have seen it's those strong Saxon the will be clear. Dear love, you have come again at my call. I have, but this does not sit well with... I come only for Elf. Innocents will die for your ambitions. I am your ally now, but after this, I must... So long as I do not lose your friendship, your oath. I do not doubt it. I have seen it's those strong the Saxon the dead will be clear. Clucking I'll round be the heart as you farmers play with your cocks. Eivor, you made it unscathed. Let us speak of our... Let us plan our approach. They are not expecting us. We should not meet much resistance. Then quietly, through the fields. It will already be too late once they... Your young Saxons can be our eyes to the west. Better to keep their soft hands away from the conflict. My scouts reported that a few nobles have arrived for the festivities already. Good. If we capture the Thanes, there will be no danger when I confront Alfred. And we could persuade them to support a new king of Wessex. I will subdue the lords. Take Deolaf and Tefta with you. They could prove useful in convincing the Thanes. Rhoda, take Erdke and Stowe and capture the garrison. Make quick work of any Saxons that dare cross into the village. <laughs> Gladly, Eivor. We each know our parts. May they blunt their swords against our might.
Tonight, Wessex's last resistance will crumble. I follow you, Eivor. And I. Be ravening wolves and croaking ravens. Stand firm, your axe arms strong, and together, we will win this final battle. <laughs> and remember, Alfred is mine. Soma, with me. Everyone else, go quickly to the village. Advance, be on the lookout for any stray guards. Get to the village and wait for my signal. Let's smoke the rat out of his guard's house. my torch did you think my king would turn his back on you Eivor when your knife is smeared with the blood of Werum stand aside Goodwin I come for Alfred Alfred is long gone and this good Christian feast a cup of honey wine to trap some wasps where is he calling his allies to his side all those who wish to see Wessex under one God you cannot win England with your sorry crew of deluded farmers and godless fools. At least I wouldn't leave them to die as I scurried through the corn husks like a rat. You have no understanding of duty, the loyalty I freely give. His plan for England, for the world, is worth the cost of my life. Then sing your tuneless hymns. Come, Raven Feeder, do your worst. <laughs> Such empty fury, it does not flatter it by eye as long as Alfred is safe. Your life will mean something. Beaten, Goodwin. Beaten? No, not so. By my death, my lord may live. Alfred used you, fool. He threw you in my path. For what? He only delays what is inevitable. Kill me then. It makes no odds. For here you stand, bloody and breathless, no closer to my king, no closer to his throne. This island will never be your home, Eivor. You will not subdue her with vicious force or win her with cocksure words. We Saxons will always stand firm, shoulder by shoulder against thieves and tyrants whose envious eyes fall upon England. If I must strike down all of England to subdue her, let it begin with you. Oh, Lord, into your hands I commit my spirit. Thank you. 
They came from every house in Hubble. Make sure the 
the garrison stays under our control. I need to help the others. Alfred has fled Chibna. Time for weep wailing. I. I cannot. And there is a blackness closing in around my eyes. It frightens. <laughs> Hunwald, listen to me. You survived the Battle of Bottlestun. Do not let this scratch best you now. I'm so cold. As winter comes so soon. You will warm yourself with mead and dancing yet, my friend. Perhaps not, Ava. It may be I will sit beside my father soon. Will he be proud of me? He will pull you to his breast. Sob bright words of welcome and until you know man ever had a worthier son. I am glad to have known you, Eivor. My truest. Come <laughs> on. 
Eivor? Swanborough. No. I am sorry. Oh! My own one! No! My poor swan! Oh, gods! He fought bravely and turned the tide to secure a victory. Your dear Hunwald died a hero, and will be so remembered. Oh, gods. I know he would have fainted to hear such praise from your lips. Thank you, Eivor. Thank you. He walks among warriors now. Yes. The lucky man. I imagine he does. I know words are poor salve for a wounded heart. I will leave you to mourn. And know that we are here for you, always, should you need us. Hampton Shire has fallen, and with it, the Kingdom of Wessex. But the cost was great, maybe too great for all we gained. Rest then, you have earned it. On the backs of so many. Time will tell if it was worth it. Something for me. What is it? A letter requesting your presence in the southwest, a village called Athelny. Nothing strange about a summons for me, is there? It is not the recipient I find strange. It is the sender. The letter is signed, a poor fellow soldier of Christ. Ah, our mysterious partner. For a short time, I hoped it might be Bassam feeding us the names of these targets. He seemed the most likely man, for a time. Only one way to discover the truth. Thank you, Hytham. I will take care of this. Yes, hello. I, I do not mean to intrude, but I am looking for someone. And who would that be then? I... I do not know exactly. Well, that would be why you ain't found him. But you're free to pass the time just here if you like. Thank you. Soul cakes, love. Do you know soul cakes? I do, I enjoy them. They're small things, size of a lumpy fist, so they'll bake fast. Keep your eyes sharp. And the butter, do I baste them? Leave the butter for meal time. I look forward to it. Right then, I'll leave you to this. If you need me, I'll be doing the washing up next door. Quite a step down from your former work, Lord. As their guest, I volunteer to help with the daily chores. They offer me a bed. I tend the cakes. Do they not feel strange giving orders to their king? Or do they know? That knowledge would benefit no one. I read your message. You went through a great deal of trouble to obscure yourself as this poor soldier of Christ. As I remember, you even sent yourself one of these letters in Winchester. A clever touch. The Order wanted me dead. I had to be careful. You said you knew nothing about the Order then. Pled ignorance. But you knew everything. Their names. Their schemes. Would you join me for a walk? You look well, Eivor. I am. 
The wars have ended, and my settlement thrives. The wars have not ended. You have simply stopped fighting. But men are brewing plots in mead halls and bedrooms. You will see. And how are you, Alfred? Getting used to the idea of being unremarkable? I am well. Better than I expected. In this exile, I have found a somewhat nourishing peace. Each morning, I am awakened by the sun and growling cormorants. I bathe in the chilly water of the marsh. I eat from shrubs and drink from buckets. It is a good life. Simple. Blessed. I've never been so far west. I find it quite peaceful here. Calming. I have traveled a long way to hear one name, Alfred. Who is the Order's Grand Magister? Tell your shadowy friends that England is swept clean. Your work is done. You? Grand Magister was not a title I desired. It passed to me on the death of my brother. From my father before him. Defilers of God's majesty and grandeur. I was their master, and I loathed them. With Goodwin, I set a plan in motion to destroy the Order from within. But my troubles with the Danes delayed that plan. But your trouble with this Dane is what led to their demise. You are Norse, are you not? You have a good year. I owe you my thanks, Eivor. For that, I give you this. The key to my study. That you may better understand the good you have done. With the order all but destroyed, you have made room for a greater idea. One to take its place. A universal divine order, inspired by God for the betterment of man. With a poor fellow soldier at its head. You have saved England, whether or not that was your intent. Now let England save you. England is no more, Lord. You are the last of her kings, and yet you have no kingdom. Look around you. God's works are wondrous. They cannot be ignored, nor resisted. In time, all those who accept God will flourish, and all those who defy him will fall away. Should you remain in England, you too will one day be her subject. Oh, bloody crumbs! The cakes are burnt! Where is that man? Young man, where have you gone? Damn. That may have earned me a night of washing linens. I do not know if we shall meet again, Eivor. God willing, we will. As one lord to another, perhaps. I'm coming, my lady. I'm here. Alfred gave me a key to unlock his study. Somewhere in Winchester. Oh dear, oh dear, look at them little boys of soot. Good lady, forgive me, I was lost in thought. No one will go at a desert oasis. Ah. Eivor, did Basim contact you in Norway? He said he would be joining you. Yet here you are, and I have no word from him. This will be hard to hear, but Basim attacked us in Norway. Vengeance for some transgression of ours, imagined or real. You mean... You mean you slew him yourself? Sigurd and I, together. I know this comes as a... I do not understand. Why would he do such a thing? He loved Sigurd, he loved you. I do not understand it myself. Perhaps one day we can speak about this with more clarity. But for now, I am deeply sorry. Here you are, Hytham. The last of the Order's sigils. You will find King Alfred's among them. King Alfred? Did our poor fellow soldier lead you to his hiding place? He did, for they were one and the same. Our poor fellow soldier of Christ was the Grand Magister of the Order of the Ancients. He turned on his own order. Fascinating. Not turned so much as trampled. 
His devotion to Christ and what he calls a universal order set him against them from the start. With all sincerity, he loathed the title and the duty he had inherited and wished them destroyed. Wonderful. With his abdication, the last stronghold of the order has been dismantled. All that remain are scraps here and there. And you, Eivor. Now that you have seen our enemy and you understand our cause, I wonder if you would join us. Become a hidden one. Was this your ultimate goal, Hytham? A trial by fire? It is a kind offer, but I do not believe we fight for quite the same course. Your creed demands that you keep your triumphs hidden. I prefer my glory to be in plain view for all to see. If I taught you our creed, if you spent time with it, it could open your mind to another view. Another view is always welcome. But to live without celebrating one's glory and honor and achievements is not a life for me. But know this. I would give my life in a moment for those I love and who love me in return. All here. Including you, my friend. I understand you well, Eivor. Very well indeed. Oh, at the desert? Between you and me, Eivor. Always thought you'd be a good child. About you and Bridget. When do you... The sooner I can make her my wife, the happier I will be. But we are fine too. Enough waiting. Cool your forge and cover your anvil. Wonderful. Shall we get... Gather your wife and your courage. I am honored to stand before you, Gunnar, Bridget, on this bountiful day. To celebrate the strength of your bond and to see you wed. I am in witness of a love that inspires and empowers. I invite you now to ours. To you, my darling, Bridget. I offer thee forge in flames that burn as brightly as my heart does for you. A blade as sharp as your wit, as glinting as your beauty. May it sing through the air as sweetly as your voice meets my ears. Dio, said we did carry to Gunnar. To never am Lucas, would be the door of heat to tea and Harriet. And I, you, I give you my sword and my promise that I will stand at your side forever. Heed for the brother of future and heal. I just saw Tawaloch and hope, a premonition. And the mount of scrying a foresight, para toivi, a sweeping adventure meeting team. Tiur enaid fel dim arall, a dyn a strong a bwra digi, a gfel as i ffiws, mae'r calon yn hedfan dyr y ti. Such poetry, oh dear, you make me cry, my love. Let us hedfan efo'n gilydd, tra bywyd yn beyond. I offer you this ring, and take yours in kind. I will wear it with pride and honor, warmed by the love of so perfect a lady. And I whisk of a Valkalon, adoration a fee than bith. This is the greatest day of my life. Embrace me, my love. <laughs> With our couple now bonded in matrimony, now we drink. Randy, saw you looking a little lonely. Thought I might come and join you. How nice. 
Are you enjoying yourself? I am. I never thought I would see gruff old Gunner so enraptured by a woman. Enraptured by anything, for that matter. He's a hard one to read, but I am pleased for him, and for this day of rest and respite. After everything, a few days of feasting will do the people some good. They need this. They do. Will you walk with me? Anywhere. Lead on. Something has been on my mind for some time. I am no seer, but I foresaw this day long ago. Not Gunnar's marriage, but our situation. Our success. How do you mean, our success? I mean to say that I saw our settlement flourishing, through our victories in war and in diplomacy. And from the day we set out from Norway, I knew that you would make a fitter leader than Sigurd. It was never in his character to lead. It was always within yours. I see. Do you? You might have warned me. You would not have listened. Fair. I do hope you see it now, in all that you have done for us. And V, you and the people here have done more for me than I could ever repay. I am honored by your faith in me, and your confidence. As I am honored by your friendship. And I by yours. Eivor, I want you to know that Sigurd and I are... We are severing the bonds of our marriage. We share a love that is steadfast, and I have faith it will forever be so. But it is not the love of a wife and her husband. It was not an easy decision. But after we talked with honesty, we embraced more warmly than we have in a great while. I think we will be happy. I hope so. And I am pleased for you. I am pleased for myself. Sigurd's desires are bigger than any man or woman can offer. He longs for something more. And what about you? What are you looking for? I have all I need right here. With you. With our people. I want to say, Ranvi... I love you, and I have for some time. I did not pursue it, not wanting to betray my brother's trust. But that does not mean I did not desire it. Does that surprise you? Gods, I worried you saw me as a woman starved for the affection of her husband. That it was loneliness driving me. But it was you, Eivor. Only you. Everything you are, everything you will become. Randvi. Without you, I would have lost my way a thousand times. I never told him outright, but I doubt he will be surprised. I think he may have suspected it even, some time ago. If he suspected it, he never said anything. He is more observant than I often give him credit for. I believe he sees us as we are, and as we hope to be. We can wait to tell him. Give it a few days, when the feasting is over and everything is settled. Agreed. I have waited long enough for you, and you for me. What is another few days? The blink of an eye. Shall we find our way back to the wedding? Bridget might give another speech. We must not miss that. About that? I have not understood a single word of her since Gloucestershire. Really? I find she speaks beautifully. With poetry, even. Are you kidding? Am I? Come, we should go. How are the marriage customs in your... Like this, in all the most important ways. There are smiles... Ch
You've been among us for quite some time, Redder. For a year or two, perhaps. But I am not the settling kind. Volker. My visions have lessened of late, and I... That is good to hear, Abel. Gunner, you old trout. You're a married man. I never thought I would see the day. Nor did I. And not for lack of trying. Richard, I give you a formal welcome to our clan and our family. You are a fine addition to Gunner's life and to ours. Dear Javier, I couldn't be more happy to see Hoping now that you wash in the case me sure that he is. Yes, of course. I, uh. As I say, it is wonderful to have you. Alvis, I'm surprised you did not serenade the bride and groom. Oh, I wished to. I did. But hope. It is a strange feeling, brother. The first happy union in our home. We have matured into something greater.